Um, thank you for your excitement in hearing me. Uh, so my name is Seven. Uh, I am the new executive director of the Global Game Jam. If you all know the Global Game Jam, we haven't had an executive director before. So this is all very exciting. I'm here to talk to you about the past 10 years and the 100 countries that we've touched with the Global Game Jam. So first of all, here's a map. These are all the countries that we've touched over the past 10 years. Um, a bit hard to see, I think, with the lighting, but you all know what the world looks like. Um, we've touched over half the countries. There are 196, and we're working hard to fill this in all the way. Uh, so we are the world's largest game jam. I, if you don't know what a game jam is, just real quick, uh, it is like a hackathon, but with games. 48 hours, make a game. But a hackathon is more like a dance competition, while a game jam is more like a dance party. Uh, it's much more about the journey to get there rather than the destination of what the final product is, the energy being together. It's great stuff. We had 36,000 people participate this past year. Over 7,200 games were made in 700 different physical locations, um, multiple places in uh, the same country. I'm from Boston. We had a Boston and a Cambridge site. It was fantastic stuff. And we've grown. Uh, we, we really, over the years, have have grown as an organization and an event. So uh, we've raised money for one, which has been great that we can fund the event year after year. Uh, we have global reach. We are in countries that other organizations have a lot of difficulty getting into. So for instance, the Global Game Jam is in Cuba. We are in Iran. Uh, we are in South Sudan this year. Like we're, we're in countries where other organizations aren't really. Uh, we have a positive social impact. Time and time again, people tell us about the great time they had at the Global Game Jam, whether it's leaving with a renewed vigor for developing games or having more confidence or working with a team and enjoying their local community, we can see the positive social impact. Uh, notoriety, people know us. The game industry knows us and likes us. Studios really want to support us. And that moves right into the institutional backing of just the industry really appreciates the experimentation and innovation that comes from the Global Game Jam. And we see even professionals jumping in. So they have a weekend where they don't have to work on the same licensed title they've been working on for 10 years, and they can actually try and make something exciting. Um, and then, most importantly for me, we've hired staff. Uh, <laughs> we have one and a half staffers now. We have an executive director and an executive producer, and that has been that is, in fact, key to an organization continuing onward into its 10th year. Um, so now, after 10 years, uh, where are we going? You know, like what, what, what happens next for Global Game Jam, Inc., which is a nonprofit organization that runs the Global Game Jam? And so we were met with this question, and what you do when you ask, where are you going? Well, where are we now? You know, what, what, are, what are we actually doing with the Global Game Jam that we can take and grow the organization with? So we recognize that we hit in five areas. Uh, arts and culture, first of all. More games, more art is made every time the event happens. So right there, nice and easy. Uh, Steam development, people leave knowing how to make games better than they started, whether it was their first time or their hundredth time. Practice is really, the, I'd say, the best way to learn how to make a game. It's just to do it. Um, personal development and community development. We see people have experience with communication, teamwork, leadership, and ending with a confidence that they, they didn't enter the event with. And that, that happens personally, and we really appreciate that that happens at the Global Game Jam. Uh, with the community, everyone's interacting in these physical locations and getting together and you're staying up late nights with people, getting ridiculous, and you're, you're making new friends, which is lovely. Uh, and then finally, economic development, where uh, we've seen products and companies spawn from the Global Game Jam and move on to be successes. And we, we love to see that we can affect someone personally, but also economically. And really, it's come down to we support the future of game development. But that's a really vague statement. So it breaks down to you know who, who is the future of game development? And um, that gets broken down even further. So we've seen successful titles from, come from the Global Game Jam, which have either spawned companies or made companies more successful. Surgeon Simulator, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, Goat Simulator, Mirror Moon, even um, Genub Games with Salam and South Sudan, seeing whole new industries rise up in countries that didn't have a game industry before and it's starting with the Global Game Jam. Or it's just more people making games. Over here are the uh, stats for Finland. Global Game Jam sites in Finland and Jammers, and as you can see, it's skyrocketed throughout the years, which is great to see all these new Jammers. 
um, or this picture, I love this picture. Uh, this is from our New York City site. A family decided to come and they wanted to, they brought their kids and they said, kids, what game do you want to make? And they worked together over the course of the weekend to make this game. Uh, and so those two right there are the future of game development as well. Um, I also have a couple of quotes. These are not shill quotes. I did not ask for these. I just have conversations with people about the Global Game Jam and they tell me these things. You know? So I had um, one person say, you know, I arguably started my career because of the Global Game Jam. It gave me the confidence for me to go into contract work. And then I had another um, friend actually you know, say, like, for many people, the Global Game Jam is their first step into the game industry. Um, so we support the future of game development. That's what we come back to. And we do that by democratizing game development, meaning we make it accessible to everyone. We want to have the lowest, bar the lowest uh, barrier of entry possible so that everyone has the opportunity to make a game. If we can give everyone the opportunity to make a game just like they can write a book, make music, make a movie, that, that's our job, to give everyone that opportunity. So now that we've done all of this and we've touched all these people and over 32,000 games have been made over these, uh, nine years come, as we come up on the 10th, who's next? You know, like where, where, where's the, where's that final, or not final, subsequent area we're going into? Uh, and we've decided it's a uh, program called Global Game Jam Next, shortened to GGJ Next. Um, and it's for young creators. So this is going to be a program of two parts with a curriculum and a youth game jam. Um, I'll stay on the slide for a second more. Uh, there are a lot of youth game development programs out there, and that is amazing. A lot of other people in this space are doing really successful things, and me with my MBA don't want us to just make another program in that space, because why when so many people are doing it so well? So we wanted to take what the Global Game Jam does so well and create an extremely low barrier for entry program that can slide in to places that might not, might not necessarily have the availability to have a youth game development program there. So our program consists of two parts. The first part is the curriculum. The curriculum will be completely free to teachers, educators, community leaders, whoever, whoever wants it, um, to teach kids, focusing 11 to 17, but 14 to 17 in the first year, how to make games. Uh, and not only will this curriculum come with lesson plans, it'll also come with video instructions on how to best deliver this content. And so these teachers who really want to bring this program to their students can work starting with an after, uh, in an after school outside of the traditional school day method of teaching these kids how to make games so that the kids that are interested, uh, you know, the, the early adopter kids will want to join in and create. Uh, and then the second part is the youth game jam. Uh, my apologies there. The, uh, the jam will be a week long rather than weekend long, uh, but it won't have overnights because these are kids we're dealing with. Um, and it'll be, the idea is to be held in the month of July. So if you have, um, if you have gone through the curriculum, you can be a part of the GGJ Next Jam. And at some point, at some week during July, because there is actually, uh, fun fact, no solid time when everybody in the world is off from school. Uh, but July is the closest we can get, so at some point during the week of July they can participate, create, uh, create a game, upload it to the GGJ Next site, which will be separate but similar to the GGJ site if you've been there, um, and then also play the games of others to really see what other people are making and creating. Um, I just want to touch on the fact we have high expectations of this program, so skill-based outcomes cognitive outcomes, effective outcomes, we, we really see this program helping kids in a number of different ways. Um, and we have a really high bar that we've set for ourselves because this is, while we come from um, our, one of our founders, you know, is based in the education sphere and we have quite a, we have three different game professors on our board. Um, this is still a new area for us as an organization. And so we have, We've created these outcomes and we really want to hit on all of them so that kids leave understanding how to make a game better, understanding themselves better, and feeling better about their confidence within the STEAM fields, and perhaps really lighting that spark that says, oh, I, I want to do this for a job. I want to do this for a lifetime. 
Because um, we don't want to have them leave the program and say like, I'm a master coder here. We want them to leave and say, that was great, I made something, I did something, and I can, I can go on to do this in the future. So with that, I would like to say thank you, uh, and quickly before you applaud, I want to say, if you're interested in being a part of DJ Next in uh, some way, shape, or form, please feel free to email me. My email is seven at globalgamejam.org. Um, we have, our curriculum is all being made by volunteers. We have about 30 volunteers, but we can always use more if you'd like to help out. If you'd like to run a site, if you're an educator, please reach out, email me. If you have a lot of money, and you just want to give me money, <laughs> please, please, I, you know, I can Venmo, cash, email, whatever you'd like, but uh, for the time being, which I think is one minute, I can take a single question. Thank you all. Now is the applause part. <laughs> started based out of Global Game Jam, so you did a lot for our community, and I think that's my question is like, how do you guys have plans in terms of maybe setting resources for communities, because we've seen patterns where uh, a lot of Global Game Jam sites work with colleges and like other businesses, and you want to like, we've seen that in Richmond, we've seen that in like local New York, and that's how like we've met with other teams. Are there any resources? So the quick answer, because the time just turned red, is no, but there are so many areas that we can you know, do great things with the Global Game Jam that we, it, it's really hard for us to decide where we need to go. Um, but as you stated, there are a lot of communities that are, are further, farther along in this that can communicate with one another and you all can connect to one another. And I think I really want to push the community aspect. I think that's something that is there one weekend out of the year, but with 36,000 people, we need to make it more. And I think that's something that can really grow from that, is you can talk to you know the Buffalo game space. You can talk to these other communities that are really um, growing their local community. Because the honest answer is, you know, nobody has any idea what they're doing. They're breaking new ground. But if you're talking to somebody else who's doing the same thing, you all can talk and figure it out. So... The answer is, I personally, if you email me, can help you and set you up with people, and I'd love to do that on a more institutional level. Yeah. Um, just to like say this out loud in front of like, I know there's a lot of educators here in academia. Like we've had people from our global game jam space or our game jam group go on to like universities or startup companies in our city. So like I want to see more of that. It's just that that framework I think would be helpful for other smaller communities. Yeah, you are completely right. Um, our founder went to Peru to talk to them about the new like game development scene there, uh, like spoke to Congress and everything. Um, so yes, we want to do more of that. If you annoy me a bunch, if you annoy me a bunch, I will definitely get on it. I promise you. All right, thank you. <laughs>